Hi and welcome. In this video I will talk about bicycle valve types, what you will likely face when you're cycling and explain the differences, the pros and cons of each and show the, the three types of bicycle valves that you will likely encounter. So here I have the valve heads separately shown and I will also show valves how they look on, on tires. And I will first start with the now more or less obsolete standard called Dunlop and this is what that valve looks like when it's protruding out of your rim it will look a bit like this and it is it has this top section that you can unscrew to replace the valve core and I will show that separately in a, in a minute and this is the one that keeps the, the valve on the, on the rim so that part is not essential but this holds it holds it pressed down by this slip that it has like a protrusion pressing it down and holding it in place and for for I will also explain the pump heads that you need for these types of valves but that is the first one that's getting obsolete now with a good reason because it doesn't have any pros of the other two models and it has some cons so let's show the 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 valve head of the, the valve uh, of that system this is the valve and you pr press the air push the air by pressure from this side and then when that air overcomes the pressure of a rubber seal and that is when the air you're pushing in is at greater pressure than the air that's already in the tire then the rubber seal will be pushed a bit out and the air will come in in this case it's coming out through this small hole and it will not let the air go back in reverse so in order to deflate a tire with this kind of valve you do need to unscrew this and then this sometimes gets unstuck like this part way through but sometimes you need to unscrew this all the way and this flies out if you're not careful or you need to give it a bit of a push and then it bursts and the air goes out so it's not very practical and another thing is that uh, mounting va uh, pumps on this is very impractical there are some that have a small like a uh, needle that you stick inside here but they won't stay in place and the other valve uh, types on, of pumps when you put on this, they don't hold air so well. So it's best to use an adapter like this one to screw it on and then use the pump for the next valve that we will show in a minute. But this is the most uh, reliable way of pumping these tires to a pressure. Now let's move on. The next type is the one that you see on motorcycles and automobiles. It's often called auto valve or Schrader valve. This is what it looks like. And this is the core of that valve. Now, in order to inflate this uh, tire with this valve, you need to press on this small thing. And I will show with this what it does when you press it. So hope I'm not, uh, I'm, I'm letting you see this, my fingers. When you press on this, you see it, releases and the air can come in however when you press on this the air also easily comes out so in order to pump these tires you need to seal it with your pump's head so that when you're pumping in it's not going out at the same time and this is what the pump head for that valve looks like and here you can see a small like a, a protrusion and that will effectively when you put this onto a valve press on this to enable you to to inflate the, the tire so you put it like this lock it in place and you start pumping then when you release it it will pressure will cause it to go off if you just give it a bit of help with your hand and it's it's done the the only the main downsides of this valve are that it does require you to use some system to keep this engaged and it's a bit thicker and so for narrow rims of road bicycles from the past when uh, wider rims were not so popular this was a bit limiting and it was uh, required to use a narrower valve today that's not much of an issue the only problem is perhaps a bit more weight if you are super weight weenie now let us move to the next next part but first let me show you how to remove the valve from this from this kind of just a second. Here I have a tool. This is made by Unior and this is the model. 
they have these numbers <laughs> as models. And so this has uh, the part that lets you unscrew a valve from an automobile tire. And you don't use that very often to, to remove this, these valves. But what you, you might uh, use it often for is to tighten a valve because when you buy a new tube, sometimes it's a bit loose and, and leaks air. It creates bubbles if you put some soap on it, so you need to tighten it. But this is the, the procedure for, for removing a valve. If you need to replace it, this is uh, the old one. It's similar design to what I had just shown you with a bit of a deformed top section perhaps on this one, but that's that's the valve of the of this automobile tube and you can buy a new one in automobile stores and replace the valve if you need to. So Now let's move on to the next uh, standard and that is called Presta valve. It's also often called French, I think. May someone correct me if I'm wrong. So here is a tube with a Presta valve. And this one does not have a replaceable core, but sometimes you can use a Presta valve and screw it in separately and replace it. This is a replacement Presta valve and I will show you now how it works using this one. So in order to deflate the tire or inflate it, you need to unscrew this top cap a bit. And then even if you're planning to inflate it, you need to press on it at least for a short period to unstick this lower section because it does get sometimes stuck. And so if you start pumping right away, you will not get it pumped. You will just be pushing into a stuck valve and maybe destroy the seal of your pump. So always press this. And then if there is any air in the tire pressure, it will push it back out. If the tire is completely deflated, then there will be nothing left to, to push it back out once you unscrew it. But if you try to pump up your tire with the valve sitting upside down on the top of your uh, wheel, then it will self-close because there's no pressure and it will just get stuck. So it's best to keep it at the, at the bot bottom of the wheel. And once you unscrew it a bit and press it, you uh, put the the, the pump, this is the pump head for the, for the Presta valves. You just put it onto the, the valve, lock it and start pumping. Once you're, you've stopped pump, pumping and when you remove your pump, this uh, air pressure inside the tire will keep getting this put be, pushed back in. So your tire is not likely to start losing air until you screw it up, until you screw this on, screw this down, <laughs> screw it up, sorry. And, uh, but when you finish the pumping, it's best idea to uh, screw this not too tightly, but just finger tight so that it doesn't leak air due to some bumps or similar. So that's the, the basic principle and uh, the three different valve types. And this tool is also used for, uh, see, I'm not sure if you can see this one has like small flats on the sides. And this tool lets this get in the middle and it gets against these flats and so it lets you uh, unscrew and screw in the, the Presta valve. So it has small threads here for screwing into the, the, val the valve body and it has greater threads here for uh, having uh, some uh, top cap screwed on or some adapter or similar and these adapters work with Presta as well because they have the same thread pitch as the Dunlop valve so you can also carry a, an adapter like this and screw it down and then use the automobile pump to pump up a Presta valve. Of course, before that, you loosen this, press this in, and then when you're screwing this on, make sure that while you're screwing it on, it doesn't turn this part so that you effectively lock down your, your valve. That's one thing. And another thing when you're using uh, petrol station pumps is to set them to a flat tire mode because these valves will not give you any feedback pressure and the pump will think that you haven't connected it. So if it's automated, it won't work. But if you set it to the flat tire mode, it will let you pump, pump up your tire. So I think I've now explained everything about uh, different valves. And I hope this helps you. And thank you very much for watching. Uh, and just one more thing, sorry, about Presta valves. 
The, the downside of them is that the valve body is relatively thin and you can easily break it if you force it too much sideways when you're pumping and, and doing things like that. So you must be careful if you're using a pump that hasn't got a hose, but those small like frame pumps, make sure to, to put it against your, your leg or something firm so that when you're pushing down on the pump, it doesn't tend to, to break this. It, it happens and that is one downside of this these valves and uh, so you need to, to pay attention to that. Now I think I finally explained uh, everything about bicycle uh, valve types. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in some other video. Cheers! Uh, as far as recommendations go, almost forgot. You thought it was over but it is not and it rhymes. Uh, in my opinion, today when the wider tires are more popular, I personally think that automobile valves are more practical and I prefer them. Uh, decades ago, for road bicycles, I would have recommended Presta valves, but now today, if you have a rim that can accept automobile valve, it's a good idea. Uh, the, the choice I would definitely not recommend using Dunlop, whatever you do. It has the same outer diameter as the automobile valve, so in those rims it will fit. And generally, the width, the type of valve you use is dictated by the, the rim that you have. If your rim has a hole big enough for automobile valve, then it's not a good idea to use an arrow pressed the valve. There are some adapters, but it's better to avoid that. And if your rim has a small opening, just for Presta valves, then you must use Presta valves. But if you are shop, so if you're shopping for tubes, you choose def practically by the rim. Just avoid down Dunlop if possible. But if you are trying to look for some wheels, I personally prefer wheels that take automobile valves, and uh, I think they're more practical. And the extra few grams and things like that are not uh, such big of an issue. Though again, for the very weight, semi people. The frame pumps that you carry for Presta valves are smaller and lighter. You can find them smaller and lighter compared to automobile valve pumps. They are usually a, a bit bulkier. So there are pros and cons to everything. It does boil down to personal choice, but as I said, I prefer automobile valves. So I think I've covered now really everything. Now it's really over. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Cheers. One more thing, one more thing, the valve length. Some, some rims are deeper sections, some are uh, uh, na uh, narrower, more shallow. And so you need to find the valve that matches your rim. It doesn't, it's not good if it sticks out too much, but if it protrudes too little, you will not be able to get your pump engaged. So the length of your valve should be matching the, the rim and they usually come in about uh, 40 millimeter lengths and uh, 60 and even 80. And so, and so there are also some, adapters that like to make uh, press the valve effectively longer by screwing on just like a, a, another body of a press the valve practically like an extension so there are different options and that's also another thing to to pay attention to that I almost forgot to mention so uh, I think that now it, it's really 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 over but I cannot promise you <laughs>